Today I'll be reviewing outer loop tuning with AMC drives. The first thing I'll review is the setup and prerequisites that you're expected to have completed before going through this video. The first prerequisite that we expect is that the drive has been current loop tuned. AMC provides another video for reviewing this process and please watch it if you have any questions on how to do this. The second task is we expect you to have auto to commutation completed. This is the process of finding the commutation for a brushless DC motor. Finally, unlike in the previous two steps, we expect your motor to be connected to a load. Now for every setup, you will need at least these three things. First, your motor attached to a load, an AMC drive, and a Windows PC running driveware. Now the first methodology that I will use for tuning is doing position around velocity tuning. The first step in configuring position around velocity mode is to set up configuration zero. The first task I'll need to do is change the loop configuration to position around velocity mode and then set up the command limiter for my system's max velocity, max acceleration, and max deceleration. I'm then going to go to my events and my basic events and disable position following error. This will prevent the bridge from disabling while I'm doing velocity and position loop tuning. Next, I'm going to open gain set zero and the oscilloscope so I can begin the actual process of tuning. Now throughout the process, I'll reset events from time to time just in case I'm running into any issues with a faulting event. So we'll change the presets to velocity so that the basic presets are configured and then I can configure the waveform generator for velocity loop, the type to square wave, I'll keep the frequency at 1 hertz, and I'll set the amplitude to a typical RPM that I'll need to achieve quickly. In my case I'm going to use 250 RPM. Then I can adjust all my scaling I'm going to leave the time per division at 10 milliseconds and I'll adjust the scaling to 100 RPM per division so everything is visible on the screen. Now once I've enabled the waveform generator, I can enable the bridge and start adjusting the gains. I'm going to start by adjusting the proportional gain until I can get a response out of the system. Then I'm going to keep increasing it until it gets close to that 250 RPM target. Then I'm going to change the time per division so I can see the whole wave and see the entire response of the system. So I can continue to adjust the proportional gain, but at this point I'm also going to start using the integral gain so that I can reach that 250 RPM that's needed. So as I increase the integral gain, I'm watching to make sure that when I hit the 250 RPM, I stop increasing this gain. So now I've just exceeded the 250 RPM gain, so I can go back to my proportional gain and continue to increase it to lower the rise time. And you don't want the rise time too aggressive because that'll cause the position loop to be harder to tune. Now I've disabled the bridge and I'm going to disable the waveform generator so that I can begin the process of doing position loop tuning. So to start that process, we'll change the target to position loop, the type to sine wave. I'll keep the frequency at 1 hertz and I'm going to reconfigure the set position to clear its current position and then clear the offset. This will ensure that the wave is centered around zero. I'll set the amplitude to about 2500 counts, which in my case is a quarter revolution, and then set my presets to position loop. Now I'm going to go through the process of adjusting the scaling so that everything can be visible. I'll also need to adjust the time per division to 100 milliseconds so again the whole wave is visible on the scope. And once I've enabled the waveform generator, we'll see the wave on the screen and I can begin the process of adjusting the gains. So with the bridge enabled, I'm going to begin the process of adjusting the proportional gain 
and I'm going to keep increasing it until I start seeing a response from the system. Once I start seeing a response, I'm going to keep increasing the proportional gain until I have fairly low error. And for sinusoidal tuning, I'm only going to use the KP value. So at this point, the error's gotten pretty small, so I, then I'm going to be done with my sinusoidal-based tuning, and I'm going to move on to my waveform-based tuning of a command profile. So I'm going to open up the command limiter, change the type to square wave, and then set the offset again to zero, and now my amplitude is going to be the size of my motion profile. And it's going to use that velocity and acceleration that I set before. And again, I'm going to have to readjust all my scaling so that everything's visible on the scope still. Now I'm also going to reduce the frequency so I can have some time where the machine is not moving so I can ensure there's stability at zero velocity. After I've enabled the waveform generator, I'll enable the bridge and I'll see the motion profile show up on the scope. And I can see that I'm following fairly well. It looks like there's a little bit of error at constant velocity. So I'm going to look into that in a little more detail. So to do that, I'm going to increase the amplitude to 40,000 counts or four revolutions so I have more time at constant velocity. So I can see, yes, there is an error at constant velocity. So I'm going to investigate looking in that more detail. Now before I change any of the gains, I'm going to want to make sure that I have stability at zero velocity as well, so I'm going to change the time per division. So now I can see both sides of the waveform. And I'm also going to add position error so that I can see in more detail where any error is occurring. So the majority of error is at that constant velocity section and I can adjust the scaling if it's off the screen. In this case, I'm just going to use the integral gain to try and get rid of that error, and I'm going to just make the error balanced around zero to get started. So once it's all mostly balanced around zero counts of error, I can increase the proportional gain some more and see if I can further reduce the error. Now that the error in my system is reduced to an acceptable level, I'm going to stop tuning. If you're going to continue, the things that you might look at is continue to increase the proportional gain. And then if you're getting overshoot near the ends of your motion profile and it's getting unstable at zero velocity, you can begin to start adding derivative gain as well. But for myself, I'm going to stop here and just move on to position around current tuning. Now before we get started with position around current tuning, I do want to mention a couple things about this mode of operation. So with this mode, it's generally not recommended unless you don't have velocity feedback. So an example of that case is when you have an analog position feedback on a brushed motor. So in those cases, you would not have velocity feedback and you'd be required to operate in position around current mode. So when you're configuring for position around current mode, you'll again start in configuration zero and set the loop configuration this time to position around current. We're also going to set the command limiter, but I'm going to have it a little bit softer this time so that I'm not attuning to as aggressive a profile. I'll then go and open gain set zero along with the driveware oscilloscope to begin the process of tuning. Now my presets are already in position, so I don't need to change the presets for right now. I am going to change the waveform target to position loop, and this time a square wave. I'll leave the frequency at 1 hertz, but I'll zero out the offset and set the amplitude to a much smaller value of 1,000 counts, or in my case, a tenth of a revolution. I need to reduce this time per division so I can see only the waveform that I'm looking for. And then I'll also need to reduce the scaling so that nothing goes off the screen.
And I'm just going to remove position error to not clutter the screen since I'm not concerned about really tight tolerances right now. So after I've enabled the waveform and enabled the bridge, I can start by increasing the proportional gain. And my initial goal is just to get the system moving back and forth. So once I get the system moving, I'm just going to keep increasing this proportional gain. It still starts to look kind of unstable. So now that it's moving back and forth, I'm just going to increase this derivative gain to try and dampen the system. And I'll just keep adjusting these derivative gain to try and dampen it more so that when I go back to proportional gain, I don't overshoot too much. And once I inc start increasing the proportional gain again, you'll notice that my rise time is getting better, but this time I'm not overshooting quite like I was before. And then you'll keep doing this back and forth while you'll get the proportional gain higher, you'll overshoot, and then you'll adjust the derivative gain to reduce that overshoot. And your goal at this point is just to get to the thousand counts in a predefined time, so in my case, um, half a second and I just want to be at a thousand counts and sit steady. So now that I'm hitting a thousand counts, I'm just going to reduce my frequency to half a hertz to see what my steady state error looks like. And I can see I have some steady state errors, so I'm just going to go and increase the integral gain to try and knock that out. So now that that's all knocked out, I can begin the process of moving to the command profile. So I'm going to disable this waveform, and I'm going to change my target to command limiter. I'm going to start by reducing the frequency again to a quarter hertz, zero the offset and set the amplitude to 20,000 counts. So when I enable the bridge, I'm going to also increase the time per division so I can see the whole wave and the point where it's sitting at zero velocity. But to see everything properly, I will need to increase these units per division so it doesn't go off the screen. And I can see that I'm overshooting quite a bit So I'm going to start by just increasing the proportional gain and see if that helps. So since that's helping, I'm just going to keep increasing the proportional gain. So as I keep increasing, I'm noticing that the overshoot is getting smaller, and but the overshoot is moving to a different portion of the wave. So once it seems to get to about the smallest point, I'm going to go to the derivative gain and start adjusting that instead. So now you can see that I am still further reducing this overshoot and again it's moving back to a different portion on the wave and I'll just keep going back and forth between the proportional and derivative to try and reduce this, this error that I'm seeing. Now once I get a pretty tight tuning, so I've gone back and forth a few different times, I'm going to go add the position error signal so that I can look in more detail at the error that I'm seeing in this move profile. And in my case, this, this might be a little bit more error than I'd like to see. So I'm just going to keep increasing the proportional and derivative gains until I get the error a little bit smaller. So now I've got a response that's pretty good. But if I want to keep increasing it, I can if I want to. Fundamentally, the process of tuning is just getting the system to respond within prescribed requirements. So I can incre keep increasing these gains until I'm ready to say that it's good enough for my system.
and maybe I don't even need it as tuned as tightly as it is right now. Now that we've completed the process of outer loop tuning, feel free to reach out to us if you have any further questions, either through our website or through our support line.